Hello and welcome to this video from the DCGS. In this video we're going to be looking at Output 6, the presentation of modification or concept design. Um, in particular we're going to be looking at the marking scheme, then looking at what requirements come from that marking scheme, uh, what you should include in Output 6, then how to sketch effectively in Output 6 and annotate those sketches effectively in Output 6, and then finally I'll give a suggested layout for your Output 6. So looking at the marking scheme then, there are 10 marks going for this output and it's in one page. And what you'll see is that output 6 in 2022-2023 is the same as what was the pre-2022 output 8. Then looking at a bit more detail at the marking scheme requirements. So first of all, it doesn't say this in the marking scheme, but it is really important. And that is that all of the sketches you use in output six must be the original ones, not scanned. Okay. Now that's the same as in output two. Um, and most of this output really is very, very similar to output two, except this time it's going to be for your concept design rather than your rather than the one that already existed. So you'll see that there's a free hand graphical representation. Uh, the concept design must be based on the design requirement choices that you made in output five, page two. So output six is really a progression of output five, um, page one and page two, and um, bringing through the idea of coming up with your target market all the way towards having your concept design. You need to make sure that you include a 3D presentation quality drawing with particular attention paid to proportion, form and volume and the tone slash line for effective rendering. So what you're looking at there is that you want to have one big sketch that's 3D that has really good proportion, which you really need for all of your sketches. Um, the form looks looks right when it's sketched and then you want to make sure that you have effective rendering in that Okay, when you're, when you're doing that, uh, that drawing in particular. The idea is to have a detailed communication of the modified concept uh, design features. That comes really from the annotation. Okay, so you have the sketches, um, which you're talking about up here, but then also down with your annotation, with your um, your detailed communication, along with smaller sketches that will go around that big one. Okay, so this page is all about that communication, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to tell the person reading what our concept design is and how it works. And then they're talking about then your thoughtful layout and presentation. So just thinking about the sizes of sketches that you have on the sheet and making sure that everything is laid out in a way that makes it nice and easy to read for the person that is, uh, that's reading it. Okay. And as I said, it's pretty much the same as your output two, except for your design now, rather than the existing um, artifact that you did in output two. Then practically, what should you include in output six? So what you absolutely definitely need to have is your one large 3D sketch as I spoke about in, in, the, in the last slide. And then you're gonna have detailed sketches showing your chosen solutions for design requirement one, two, three, four, and five. And the reason that you have those is to be able to give that detailed communication of your, of your concept design. Without those ones, if you only had one large 3D sketch, you wouldn't be able to show enough detail for somebody to fully understand what your design was all about, okay? And you must, absolutely must annotate every single sketch you do, okay? So you'll be annotating your large 3D sketch and all of the other fi five so that you can um, communicate your design to the best of your ability. Then how to sketch effectively in output six. And really that uh, idea of effectively is really important because you could do really good sketches, but if you don't think about what they're showing or annotate them, then they mightn't actually be very effective sketches. So first of all, if you find sketching difficult, wait until after you've completed your concept design SOLIDWORKS model and use that as a guide to help your sketching, um, which is similar to when I said you should take a photograph. Um, of your object for output two, it just makes it a bit easier to to draw it because the actual um, SolidWorks model is on a two D screen, and so therefore it gives you very much uh, a template to work from. Okay, it makes it easier to do your rendering, and it makes it easier with your shadow and shade and everything. So, um, I'd highly recommend that if you're a little bit uh, if you're not so confident with your sketching, uh, use your coloring pencils uh, because they're the easiest thing to render with. Sketch separately and stick them on. Do each sketch a number of times and choose the best one, and use good quality paper. So they're they're the same as what I would have said to you for output two. Okay. And then one of the most important things when it comes to sketching is that the best sketch in the world can always be improved with annotation because remember these aren't, this isn't art. We're not trying to draw the best sketches for the sake of drawing the best sketches. We're trying to communicate something. So a sketch with annotation is what's going to do that. A sketch on its own 
just isn't enough to communicate your design effectively. So make sure those annotations are in there. And leading on from that then, how to annotate Output 6 effectively. And again, we're annotating, but we want to make sure that it's effective annotation. So you should refer to your five design requirements from Output 5 when explaining each sketch. So constantly go back to those design requirements because you've already said that they're really important. Be clear and concise, so no extra words that are vital to your explanation. We're not looking for paragraphs of text in your annotation. We're looking for quick, um, concise, clear words that you put in. Um, and probably for each one of your annotations, it's going to be one sentence and at max two sentences. Do them handwritten in upper and lower case. Um, that just looks the looks the best. If you normally do joined writing, don't do joined writing, but just do your normal writing without joining them. Okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend um, typing out your annotations, sticking it on. It just it just doesn't look well, and the the upper and lower case handwriting does. Use black pen or marker uh, when you're doing your annotations. Um, what some people do is that they do it in pencil first, and then when they're happy with their annotations, then they go over it with the, with the pen or the marker, and I find that that works very well. Um, and then your annotation should always be very close to your sketch and accompanied by an arrow. So you always want an arrow to show what you're, what you're um, talking about, but you also don't want that arrow to have to be too long or to have to go around something, okay? So you want to make sure that those annotations are very close. And remember then that if you give your output six to someone, you want to make sure that they'll understand your concept design and how it works by looking only at your, your sketches and your annotations. So you can't um, think about it that you would be there explaining it to somebody. You want it that your words and your sketches do all the explanation that you need. And then finally for output six, how would I suggest that you lay it out? Um, I would have a large 3D sketch, okay, of your entire um, artifact and render realistically as the biggest sketch on your page. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the bottom left. It could be in the middle or it could be somewhere else on the page, but it needs to be there. Then I'd have one sketch per design requirement. So explaining each design requirement in a sketch and then an object in use um, sketch is always a good thing to try to put in. So that would be somebody actually using it. So it could be your object um, with a hand in it in the actual the use case because having somebody using it is a very good explanation of how it works. And then just remember that you print off your, your page label for these pages um, and you stick them on and that'll keep your, um, your formatting consistent throughout all of the pages and make it look as though everything is part of the same piece of work, which it obviously is, but you want to make sure that that's very clear. Thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and that you got something out of it. If you have any questions, please um, ask them in the comments and I will try to get back to you. Um, make sure that you like, you subscribe and you share the channel so that everybody um, can get the most out of these videos.